people, welcome to the Arsenio Buck Show. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, you could call me AKA Mr. Wonderful, AKA uh, God Only, AKA whatever it may be. But today, it's not about me. It's about this man sitting right in front of me. Yes, my very first face to face interview with the Lab Bangkok CEO and entrepreneur slash fitness guru slash ultra marathon runner slash. So many other different things, and man, I just had to get him on my show. So, man, I want you guys to welcome this man, Rich Cohen, everybody. Rich Cohen. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Very excited to be here and talking to you today. Very excited. My first podcast. So your, your very first podcast? My very first podcast. Okay, are you yeah. nervous? I am a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but also really excited. It's right. really excited. It's a great day. So right. I'm looking forward to... See what you're gonna be throwing at me today. I'm I know. feeding off your energy right now. I'm just, I'm telling, and it's, it's funny, man. If you guys can actually see the view of this place, it's literally right on the main road, Sukhumvit. You got Novotel over here, four identical buildings. You got uh, literally people taking showers right behind this man, Rich. I mean, it's very fascinating being in this area. You know what I mean? So it's quite diverse. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell, uh, tell the world who you are because I got people listening in from just about everywhere. Um, all around the world, they might listen in, you know, a day from now, hour from now, year from now. Could be anything, a decade, but uh, tell them who you are, man. All right. Well, um, thanks for having me on the show again. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rich Cohen. I am the CEO and founder of The Lab, which is a boutique fitness studio in Bangkok, Thailand. I've been in Bangkok, Thailand about, on and off, about 15 years, 15 years. In, in, the, in the fitness industry, starting up starting up small gyms, gym chains. Mm-hmm. And um, recently, i just written my first book as yes. well, Fit Pro to Profit, which is an essential success guide for um, fitness entrepreneurs, business owners, and, um, and personal trainers who want to get into the get a foot step into the industry and get a bit of a head start. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also working as a, as a life coach uh, here in Thailand with a few, few clients as well. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a student of the world, always learning every, every single day and uh, lucky to be surrounded by some incredible people. Uh, my, my clients and my Including you, AJ. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank and you. The thank you. The lab. Yeah. So, um, yeah, learning and, 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 and spreading love around the world. That's what I'm doing. Awesome. Okay. If you guys got any questions, uh, I'm not sure because we're doing this at a very awkward time for my fellow Americans out there. You guys are probably all asleep. But uh, for everyone else who's listening in, you guys can send your questions in. Don't worry, we probably won't get any. <laughs> we might get a couple or whatnot, hey, but we'll mom, see. My mom might jump on it. <laughs> I do. I do apologize for the links. Um, the thing is, in terms of, uh, I wish I could actually have a link before I go live, so I could send it to everyone, and then there could be an update saying, "Okay, it's now live." But uh, yeah, the podcast I use right now is a little bit weird. So I'm going to ask you, okay. why Thailand? Wow, good question. I mean, how long have we got for the show? And go, and we got 45 minutes to an hour. All right, okay. And if we go over, if we're having a good time, we can keep going too, okay? I'll try to kick to the, to the, uh, to the quick version. Uh, um, yeah, good question. Why Thailand? Well, I moved to Thailand in 2004. Um, a, lot, a lot of people in Thailand will re- remember that year because it was the year that we had the tsunami. Oh, yeah, that's right. Remember in December. Yeah. Um, I moved here because I was, I was, working, I was living in, in the UK I was working as a gym instructor in the UK, a personal trainer, right. and I just felt this need, this urge, this kind of like desire to go out and see what else was happening, what else was in store in right. the rest of the world. I always had this kind of urge that there's, there's something else out there, and I was lucky that I, was, I traveled a lot when I was a kid, moved around, um, got, got to go on great holidays right. uh, with my parents, I was very fortunate. Um, <clears throat> and then, I think that, that kind of got a bit of a travel bug, uh-huh. a travel bug going. My sister was living in New Zealand at the time. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So I was kind of really inspired to go and uh, to, to go abroad and, and to see what the rest of the world was like. So um, I flew out to flew out to Thailand. Um, we went straight to Bangkok and started working um, as an English teacher. Actually, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I actually read yeah. in a little particular part of the book. That's right. That's Tell right. me about that. One of my favorite jobs, actually. Is that right? Teacher. One of my favorite jobs. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome because you you, you know I'm, 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 I know. I'm I'm a, I'm, a from, I'm I'm a kid from a very small town in England called Essex, and when I first moved over, he had a very strong accent, 
a very strong Essex accent. Right. People in Thailand didn't understand a word I was saying. Exactly. Like, Liver people from Liverpool, too. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Well, no one understands what people from Liverpool <laughs> <laughs> And you yeah. can't from the same yeah, I don't right. understand the yeah. damn thing y'all saying out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's so funny. So well, my accent was very thick, very strong, so I had to, I had to adapt it and change it and, and right. be flexible to, to what Thai people could, could understand. And um, yeah, I just started doing uh, some, some English teaching, which I really enjoyed. It's great to connect with people. I love helping people. It's just yeah, something too. I really like That's to do. And you're in the same, same boat, especially with your podcast. Cast, yeah, reaching so many people. Right, and uh, after that, um, I just found I, you, you said why Thailand, and specifically, I just found it a very easy place to be. A very, uh, I found it quite open uh -huh. uh, in regards to a lot of countries. I think out there, um, over there, it's very difficult to, to uh, in regards for, for foreigners. You know, right. first of all, come, moving over to Thailand, I found obviously the climate great, uh -huh. uh, the food was great. Mm -hmm. um, it's cheap to live here. Right, um, people are quite. In general, warm and friendly. Right. So, um, well, and I just, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Threw <laughs> <laughs> that out there. Oh, I just yeah, threw it out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I found it very warm, and like I think, yeah, yeah, it just seemed like a great place to 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 be and stay, and I just just rolled with it, and you know, sooner or later, years and years go by, and you're still here. Right. Um, just love the place. It's great. Oh, it's great. okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now there is one. Boy, all right. Now there is one section. Whereas, I don't know, I love it because you went straight into a personal development realm. And it was in the beginning stages. I'm not going to try to give away too much information, <laughs> just a little snippet. But there was one time, th at the age of 21, you dove off a roof. Oh, yes, yes. Now, and then there was the transition. It was kind of like a lot of people have this transition. Like mm. Michael Bernard Beckwith, he had this transition having just dreams every night over and over and over until he was stabbed, apparently. He felt the pain, woke up, and his life changed forever. Mm -hmm. So we have these types of things. Me being in Thailand, mm -hmm. you guys don't know. A lot of you from the lab and all these trainers and all these people who are going to be listening to this in the future, um, it's, been, it's been, you know, one of those rides where, you know, I thought Thailand was, quote, unquote, the land of smiles and whatnot. But my life turned right upside down quickly. And then next thing you know, all the suggestive and impressive and all the impressions that people started putting into my mind, I started believing that. Like I was just a shade in the American fabric, and that shade was disgusting, also known as being African-American. And it wasn't until two years ago that happened. So you were going through that, I guess you could say that cycle. And yeah. of course, good old Ibiza, I've read, I've heard, oh my God, I've seen videos <laughs> and stuff online. It's like insane. But... After that, looking in the mirror, a lot of things happened. They did. Yeah, yeah so, tell, did. so tell us. Run that through us, yeah, man. Um, yeah, I think so, some, some people know, so a lot of people don't know. But yeah, it's, um, I think well, a, lot of us, a lot of us have these turning points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these, absolutely. Um, come to, some people call them come to Jesus moments where <laughs> yeah. you take a look at the mirror and have a long, hard look at yourself, long, hard look at yourself and realize, is there, maybe it's time to change. Maybe it's time to change my ways. Maybe it's time to think yeah. differently. Maybe it's time to buck up your ideas. Yeah. And for me, it was it was it was the latter. You know, uh, I had a, had a swimming pool accident in two thousand and one. Um, actually, it was it was right on. It was very again a very um, very significant time. To, uh, it was around about September eleventh, two thousand and one. Wow. Right? Everyone knows where they were on September. 11th. Absolutely. Oh my god. And I Damn. was in Ibiza, as you mentioned. We had a, had a good good week, and I. We were all jumping around. We were on the swimming pool, diving in off this uh, balcony into the swimming pool. Right. And uh, for some reason, I decided to, to dive in head first. Don't yeah. ask me why. I don't know why I did it. And boom, hit the bottom of the pool. Right. Wow. Lights out. Unconscious. Um, I just all I could remember is just seeing black everywhere and the light. The room. The room. It was just like a lot of spinning. Right. And then I opened my eyes and I was completely unconscious. Um, I always see was blue from the pool. Wow. And I tr tried to swim to the top. And as I went to move my body, nothing responded. And I was completely still, motionless. Couldn't move a single thing. Right. My body. And one of my friends had to dive in and, and pull me out wow. onto the side of the pool. And I was paralyzed. I was, that, that was it. That move. was paralyzed. That I was, was paralyzed. Yeah, wow. I couldn't move my fingers, couldn't move my toes, couldn't move my arms, couldn't move my legs. Eventually, as the time as time went on, um, and I was, and the ambulance was coming to to 
to pick me up, uh -huh. I managed to start to move my fingers, start to move my arms a little bit, start to move, get a little bit more motion, motion back to my um, my body. Right. I can't, I, and I realized how lucky I was right. to to still to still be able to move. But turn, uh, uh, end of the story was I ended up I broke my neck C1 and C2 vertebrae in the in the top of the spine and T3 T4 in the thoracic spine. Um, very very lucky to still be um, still be yeah. still be still be standing, still be moving, still be. Um, Able to move my body, yeah. yeah. Um, similar, I broke the similar bones to Christopher Reeve. Oh, right, right. I was yeah. just re I was just reading about that in mm. Lewis Ho's book. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. So the same, same, same kind of accident. Uh, same bone. So recovering from that, it took around about a year to to try and recover from 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 that accident. I had uh, one of those. I don't know if you've seen those halo braces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so yeah. Halo brace bolted into my head and. Fixed. I look like a bit like Frankenstein. Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I just had that image. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of fixed it there, and uh, I remember like you know, just uh, just been just been in traction for, for that so much time. And somebody like me, I like to, I'm probably like you, very energetic. I like to move around a lot. So right. being stuck in traction was uh, was very challenging. <laughs> a very challenging time. Damn. And that's when I had the, that's when I had the moment. That's when the moment came where I looked. You no, know, I managed to after being in six uh, seven, six days, right. six nights in intensive care. Right. Came out of intensive care, looked into the mirror, and I'm, my body just was a frail blood, you no know, bed sores all over me. Oh I my looked goodness. in the mirror, and I was like, "All right, things are gonna start being different. Things are gonna start to change." And that was my that was my turning point. That was my come to Jesus moment. That was a turning point. That was a turning point. So what did you do going for? You know, going how long did it take for you to go through the rehabilitation and everything? Yeah, so that took around about like all in all, it was about it was about twelve months. About twelve, yeah. Yeah. So um, obviously, when you when you take your if anyone's ever broken their leg or broken your arm, uh -huh. uh, you know, even even injured a knee, anytime that that joint or that um, area is in traction for a long time, you'll find that your muscles waste away. You know, you get like atrophy in the Absolutely. muscles. Absolutely. Yeah. So as soon as they took this Frankenstein thing off my head, I couldn't look left or right. Right. I was like, everyone look over, uh, everybody look over there. I was like, oh, I had to move my whole body. <laughs> like the bodybuilders, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like the bodybuilders, right? Right. right. So I had the physiotherapy to get the neck moving again and and, and to move my body again and. I, I just had this new, new, new determination. My new determination was to build. I was, I was, I felt lucky that I still had this body. I felt lucky that I could move my legs. So appreciative that I could move my arms. Uh -huh. Everything was working again. So I just started to work. I just got into a gym, AJ. I just like started lifting weights, yeah. training, 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 training. Right. And that was when I, that was when I realized that I'd been given a second chance here. Right. And Damn. actually, one of these scars in my head. I got all these scars in my head. You can see that one there. Right. These scars in my head and. Uh, I actually, the, the doctor said, do you want me to, I can close that star, star scar for you if you want. I said, nope, I want to keep it as it is, as a reminder. To so you see that every day, does that still like motivate you and it stuff is, like that? Yeah, 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 yeah affirmation yeah, yeah. every day, seeing that scar every day, yeah, it's like, yeah. you've only got one chance, I know. you've only got this is your last chance, make it count. And that was basically saying, hey, this is your last shit, damn. This is last chance, yeah, yeah. So... The big, big turning point, uh, back my idea, my, back my idea is I basically pulled my socks off and said, right, I've got to do something, I've got to do something meaningful, I've got to oh. do something that I can, that's something that's going to not only just help me, but help others. Right. And I wanted to use this experience that I'd been through right. to, uh, to influence and help and, and to motivate and to encourage others that they can do the same, no matter what, right. what you've been through in your life. Right. So, like, you, you made an interesting point, the muscles, right? And I remember I had a teacher by the name, the teacher, <laughs> yeah, okay. A dentist by the name of Dr. Park, biggest douche lord on the planet. He was one of my first bosses, right? And, of course, Korean-American. It doesn't really matter. But he would go to the – his body was a little bit – everyone has different bodies, right? But he would say, Arsenio, if you don't do an ab workout for one day, you will lose your abs. Well, what do you think about that? I mean, because you had to build your muscles back up. Mm -hmm. You know, everything just went away, just such as what happened to me when I had my <laughs> stomach bug when I first came to Thailand. Uh – I lost like five kilograms. Yeah, I couldn't eat or anything like that. Then finally got my protein back from Herbalife, and everything started taking off again. And mm -hmm. but, how fast does like mother mother? How fast does muscle? I guess you could say degenerate. Is that yeah, a, is yeah, that the right yeah. word? Uh, yeah. Atrophy. Yeah, muscle. Oh, muscle atrophy, atrophy. Atrophy. Okay. Yeah, okay. Atrophy there is, you go. It's a process by which a muscle um, stops to be stops to be active or starts to. Uh, uh, Starts to get smaller or right. not not be as effective, right. and that that can happen fairly quickly, especially if you never use it. You've heard the expression "use it or lose it." Uh huh. So you know, for example, if we don't like, I think it goes with our brains as well. If you don't use your brain, 
right. to, the, to the full capacity that it's, um, it, its potential has, right. chances are you're just going to be sitting there playing PlayStation or, or watching the computer or watching the TV or something like that, you know? Right, right, so right. just it's same thing that goes, goes with your arms. I mean, if you, your, your arms, your body, your, um, your, your muscles, if you, don't, if you don't use them, you don't activate them, they will, they will, it's interesting how they will completely dege- uh, disappear really, really quick. So it, and it could be in the matter of... Uh, can be a matter of days. Wow! Especially if you've been, if there's no, if there's no twitching, there's no kind of activation whatsoever. Then they can they can atrophy really really quick. Right. So okay. So god damn. So check this out. So you get a big massive okay Americans, two hundred million fat or obese. I'm uh-huh. sure you're aware of that. Uh, they like trying to point at Nauru and some of the Samoan, co- you know, the Polynesian countries, saying, "Oh, they're the fattest country on the planet." No, America, you got two hundred million, and I got to point that out because. You get these really, really big people, right? In terms of muscle, it's, it's just literally fat piled on top of other fat, piled on top of other fat. And so when it comes to just being a couch potato, mu- muscle atrophy doesn't happen that way. But when you're working out, it happens more like within two days or something like that. So you get a big, a real big, you know, obese guy, mm-hmm. okay? And then you ask someone who works out. Someone who works out loses their muscle within two days, atrophy. Mm. But someone who has never worked out doesn't necessarily lose it, or maybe it's there, but it's filed on top of fat. Right. You know right, what I'm getting right. at? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, a weird, it's a weird question, but yeah. yeah. It's I, I, th- I think, yeah, I think uh, we're, well, if let's take a look at someone who's generally, um, generally obese or ge- someone who's generally uh, hasn't, hasn't had an exercise program for a long time. Yeah. Now, we all, all of us are built with um, some, some elements to us. We all have skin, we all have bone, we all have muscle, we have organs. Right. And we, you know, to stand up properly, we all need muscle to be able to stand up or to be able to, to, be, to be active. So we all have the same amount, m- amount of muscle. Mm. What we do is what we do to the muscle, how we train it, how, we, how do we train the muscle to, to be responsive. Mm. And the more training, the more response you put onto the muscle, the more its ability to grow, mm. or more its ability to develop, or more its ability to get stronger as well. Okay. So with, the, with these guys that have, haven't exercised for a long period of time, or never, had, never been through a training program at all, their, their muscle mass or muscle, um, uh, their muscle uh, tone right. is going to be way lower than somebody that's been, been working out okay. a lot of the time. So again, the potential's there. We all, we're all born with the same potential. Everyone has the same potential. You have the same potential as me. Right. To build. Maybe maybe this, the, the speed at which we can both build muscle is obviously going to be different, right. depending on the kind of genetics. Uh-huh. However, we all still have the potential to become anything we want to become. Right, exactly. And it all comes down to lifestyle. It all comes down to habits, discipline. Right. And a really strong reason and connection why. Right. And you see the guys that are out there looking, look at old girls looking out. They're great shape, training every day. Wellness is high. Oh yeah, huge bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of them yeah. got it going on. You know, oh, AJ's getting very excited here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you said that, that, I don't know. I just had images. I was like, oh my god, yeah, that one. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, a lot. And I love it because, see, you went from the education to the fit realm, and into, I mean, in America, oh man. Now, obviously, not that many people work out, so it's hard to keep that motivation going. But when mm. you're around a team such as this place, the mm. lab, it's just amazing seeing, you know, these women walking around, their shoulders are broad. They got like these, per- you know, the perfect, <clears throat> and then, you know, they, it's just their legs and everything's toned. It gives you that motivation. When did you make that switch from education to fitness? Great story. Uh, great, great question. Uh, I don't know if the story is great, but the question is, <laughs> it's definitely good, definitely good. You can make your own decision with the story. Is great. Well, I, I was, I was doing. Uh, obviously, I was, I was. I mentioned before, I was doing um, education, like English, English teaching for a long, longest time, mm. and then I was doing a little bit of private training and, and group fitness classes, a few little jobs here and there. Because remember, in two thousand and four, when we were talking like fifteen years ago. Oh, man. Thailand's very different than it is I now. Know. Bangkok like, like how? Bit, well, I mean, there's, there's, there's no labs. There's no... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, there's no labs. There's no labs. <laughs> number one, right? Second, just, no shredded 18. Yeah, no right? shredded 18. <laughs> just, just, some, just some shameless promotion. Uh, there's, no, there's no labs. There's no shredded 18. There's, actually, actually a, lot of the, a lot of the gyms, a lot of the big box gyms, I mean, there's no fitness industry. Right. There's literally no fitness industry. I mean, there's, I mean, even just looking across out these windows, there's no Novotel, there's no big dinosaur no park. Tells. Look at all these um, condos and stuff. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's dinosaw crazy. park across you the know, street. The amount of growth that we've seen in, in Bangkok over the last 15 years has been incredible. 
So 15 years ago, there was there was no fitness industry. So people like personal trainers didn't really exist. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so I had to, when I when I was there was I remember there was a bunch of about three or four other expats. We're uh -huh. all working in the personal training industry and uh, very very difficult to get 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 that sort of thing started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because people didn't really understand it, didn't really know it. So they had to create this ed an education line. Yeah. So it was not very it's not very um, practical just to come over to Bangkok and just start a personal training business because then there's no industry. Exactly. So I made the switch by becoming I actually became a swimming coach for a long time with a very very quite a well known uh, swimming company here in, in Bangkok oh. uh, teaching kids how to swim. Is that right? Which again was amazing. Is that like, right? Oh, awesome job! Great job! Just throwing kids around the pool. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> teaching Good kids, yeah, yeah. Kids, uh, uh, kids, kids, teaching kids to swim, very oh. rewarding. Um, yeah. Actually, a lot of the kids that I used to teach swimming now come here and train with me at the lab, if you can believe that. Right. Um, very, very no way! Yeah, Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And I bump into them and they're like, Mr. Richard! <laughs> Yo! Like, yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> you used to be four years old, now you're like 21 or something? That's crazy, yeah. yeah. Absolutely crazy. Uh, so next, they're, they're, you know, it's obviously it's, it's it's developing. So yeah, the switch the switch came from like a, a segue actually. It came from a segue through uh, going from from education like teaching English yeah. into swimming coaching, where I had a great I had a good job, nice stable income. I was getting a work permit and visa through this company. Oh, there you go, good. And good. the whole while I was, I was able to speak to the parents of the um, of the of the kids that were uh, that were that were swimming with me. Right. Tell them a little bit about what I do in the fitness industry, how I'm a personal trainer. Right. And suddenly the parents wanted to do some training with me, so I started to train the, train the parents. And then other people got to know me, a lot more referrals and, uh -huh. and, uh, and connections and networks that way. Uh -huh. And so suddenly um, I, found, I found that, okay, now I'm, I'm probably personal training and doing as many group classes as I'm doing swimming coaching. So I can potentially, it's a risk, but uh -huh. I can potentially take, make the switch now from being a swim coach to being a full-time fitness professional. Okay. So I used to use a little segue. How long, how long did that take? When you became a full-time uh, fitness professional, was that 2009, yeah, 2010? About two, yeah, it was, um, it was about two years. Yeah, when I became a full-time fitness professional, I started my first business. It was in 2007. Wow, see, that was the prime time. Yeah. Damn. 2007. So when, you, you know what I've been re I've been oh, watching so many different things and it's amazing because the internet, right? In 1995, 1996, I don't remember much of anything. I remember MSN Messenger coming in the early 2000s. Oh God, yeah. And you remember the, the the different types of music software like the Kazam, the Morpheus, the LimeWire. Never did I have the conscious idea in around 2004 when MySpace came. To say, you know what, maybe I should start a blog on something. Those people who did that and started creating YouTube videos, they're millionaires now. And so then it came, of course, you know, that's when Facebook came, 2006. Only universities can, you know, enroll into Facebook. Then, of course, Twitter came probably, oh, I can't remember, probably earlier, but it started taking off like 2009, 2010. And now, of course, do you think it's a saturated market right now in terms of starting up fitness businesses here in Bangkok? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a saturated market. I think mm -hmm. it's a. I think it's a. It's a developing market. I think there's more okay. and more okay. um, fitness companies coming yeah, in. Absolutely. But, but maybe that's coming in for a reason. Maybe there's more demand okay. for for people. Wellness is becoming more of a priority right. for people, and I think people understand that the that there's such a great um, such a great link between. Great wellness, right. prioritizing your, your, your prioritizing your health, uh -huh. prioritizing your nutrition uh -huh. to peak performance. Right. Whether that's in your career, whether that's finding a relationship, uh -huh. whether that's getting um, getting better sleep, uh -huh. whether it's uh, getting more finances, whatever it is, it all links from. And, and you know, this is not just me saying it. I, I hear a lot of this from. I follow a lot of people like Tony Robbins. And oh yeah, yeah. I love Tony, yeah. the big Tony. Yeah. And um, he says a lot. You know, a lot of what, what, what people, what we're realizing now is that the more we move our body, the more we move our physical uh, state, the more we are physical, the more we move, uh -huh. the more energy we have. The more energy. Absolutely. We have. So that's why. Yep. The more energy we have, the more a bit the more, the more our eyes are open, our brains are working, yep. are working harder right. to find opportunities and to create, create opportunities to startups, mm -hmm. um, create technology, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's now becoming, uh, I think, ties in particular are starting to realize that health is important. Right. So I think there's, there lies the gap for, right. um, 
fitness companies or people in the fitness industry to come in and, and serve. And if you're serving well, you're serving professionally, you can do a great job. See, that's the next one. I, um, before I get into that, customer service, let me throw that word out there right now before I forget it. Um, and now you know. Um, I remember, uh, what is it? In the northern part of Bangkok, guys, I'm talking about probably, what, 20 kilometers away, 12 miles if you're American. Uh, there's a place called Rongsit, right? And I started running around there. People would look at me crazy because I'm running out there on the streets. Yeah. Okay? And I'm, like, listening to, you know, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, you know, can't hold us. I got an anthem. I'm screaming. Okay? I'm rapping. People are scared. People are holding their purses. Okay? People are terrified. They're like, ah, black guy. It doesn't matter. But I believe I started inspiring a lot of people over there because guess what? When I started doing that, two weeks later, there's another man. Next thing you know, people all around the community, probably every evening, every morning, people would bike in that little community. People would run on this side or on that side of the main shopping center or over here. See, that's what I love so much. You have no idea how much you can indirectly inspire someone. Just like um, French guy. French guy. Yeah, David. Yeah, David, yeah, David, yeah, yeah. David, David. Mr. He, David. Mr. David. He's probably going to be on my podcast soon. Um, and I told him, I was like, David, you can inspire someone. Just by creating, of course, all social media, you get your Twitter, you get your Instagram, put it all together, depending on what you're going to do, you speak English, David. How many people in France speak English? Just saying. So if he could somehow go into a fitness community, you know, let's just say YouTube, start creating blogs and put videos or do a vlog or do this, he could build a community such as what I've done. And so then that brings me to customer service. Personal trainers, Thailand. Let's, okay, let's put it out there. Fitness First, if you guys don't know, Fitness First sucks. Um, so Fitness First is a place. You got a lot of different places. Uh, there's a lot of gyms, and they suck ass. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse my language. They, they kind of – customer service is garbage. How far does customer service go in terms of the lab? Because obviously the lab, there's, there's basically no question. Highest customer service. Why? Because – Foreigners, you know, the, the Brit- British, English, whatever you want to call it, British, American, Australians, we provide customer service. Most of us. Uh, not Atlanta. Uh, just called you guys out. Uh, and so this is some places we provide great customer service. If you give that sort of customer satisfaction, people are going to return. It's kind of like a restaurant. If you go there and someone comes up to you and they just stare at you and they wait for, some, for something for you to say – you're not coming back there. You're probably going to write a big F you on the receipt and flip somebody off when you're walking out. But how is it with the fitness community in terms of providing customer service? It could be personal training or the girls at the front desk. How do you train? I don't, because obviously you're the CEO of the company. How were you able and how are you still able right now? to train and say, listen, this is how we're going to provide service and stand out from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you right now, service is everything in the world. If you got the top service in Thailand, you're the moneymaker. You're the big, you're big time because a lot of places lack service. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Yeah, it's really, that was a rant. (laughs) (laughs) That was a rant. Sorry, Atlanta. My bad, Atlanta. (laughs) I'm going to have been to Atlanta. I love you guys. I I gotta go there first and figure out. Then I can judge you. <laughs> um, yeah, you make a really interesting point. Uh, cash, yeah, we were in a relationship business. You know, it's all about relationships. This, this, uh, the fitness industry. And I think a lot, of, a lot of service industries. It is about how, how quickly mm-hmm. and how um, effectively can you communicate with, the, with your customer. Right. Uh, I didn't, re- I didn't think I really quite realized this at first um, when I first started the business. I think I, you d- I do a lot of it unconsciously, uh, where you know you just. I don't do it, you do it out of, I think, authenticity. Like, if I finish training with a client, I'm just going to text them and say, hey, how are you doing? Are you feeling okay? You got any soreness? You got any stiffness? Make mm-hmm. sure you drink this much amount of water. Have this protein. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing it to kind of, as a, as a value-added service. I didn't realize right. it quite, quite how much it meant until uh, people started to say to me, hey, look, you know, that it's what you do about sending out these messages or sending out email blasts or newsletters. Right. It's really great because we get to connect with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's, that's good to know. So then you just... For me, for the, the training wise, it was just trying to install those beliefs and those um, those those procedures in, in with the staff. But also, I think proximity is power, and I've, I've luckily managed to attract some 
fantastic trainers and, and, and staff and clients over, over, uh, over the years who care and then they, yeah, they, they care as much as, as, my, as much as I do and right. I, guess, I guess they're only with, with me or we're all, we're all together in this boat because we all, we all, we're all going towards the same goal and that is just to make sure that our clients come in and get the most fantastic experience right. uh, possible that we, that we can give, that, give them even though they want to kill us after every training session <laughs> right 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 I know that's the best <laughs> The it, best part, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for nearly killing me. <laughs> yeah, the training session. But I think that's part and parcel of, of what it is that what it is that we do. And so, yeah, the customer service is is um is, is really important. I think now we live in such a in such a very everything's visible now online, right? Facebook, you said Facebook, social media, YouTube. So you've got to really look after people because if if you don't, then you'll know about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, those Google <laughs> reviews come, yeah, and come. when they come, they come by storms. <laughs> oh, my God. That's why I try keeping it real. I try keeping it 100, as they say, in my hood. Yeah. But because, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, in the future. See, once I do a TEDx or do this and do that and mm. I end up blowing up, people are going to be like, hey, you call me this six years ago. Yeah. I'm like, I have no recollection of that whatsoever, so I don't know what you're talking about. Then they snapshot, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't do anything. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's all about that. Okay, so what are some of the? This, these are some good questions. Here we go. What's some of the? Some of the worst excuses you hear from some of your clients in terms of? Oh, I don't want to work out. <laughs> oh, I'm bored. Oh, I don't want to. I need. I need to put on my makeup before I, you know, before I work out and stuff like that. I've seen some crazy mm, things, you know. Some tough, tough excuses. Excuses. I think for me. I mean, you do hear a lot of different. You do hear a lot of uh, different crazy excuses. Um, I, th- I think, luckily, I think we have we have the clients that we come here. Actually, they really want to come train, uh-huh. so we don't really oh, yeah. don't really come across that many challenges. Maybe. People not wanting to come and come. Yeah. Typically, you know, living in Bangkok, you see outside, it's just sometimes <laughs> it's traffic, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, let's be honest, the traffic does suck. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Right, but. Generally, um, the, the only excuse that, that, that kind of um, that gripes me a little bit is the lack of time. Right. When people say I don't have time, mm-hmm. because we we all we all share time. Right. I kind of feel that time is not not, not one ha- one person has more or less than anybody else. Right. We all it's just depending on how much you want to prioritize your mm-hmm. training over prioritizing anything else that you're doing. Right. And um, but I do believe that timing mm-hmm. uh, to start. Sets different to, to start a full-on program mm-hmm. is really important. For example, if you want to have a very specific program, like you know, well, an like ultra marathon, 18. or a strength eighteen body, right. body fat loss, or right. or a strength building program, yeah, you need you do need to decide, commit, and resolve to achieving that achieving right. that particular goal. However, if it's just moving, uh-huh. going for a walk, going for a, a, a light jog, uh-huh. doing some doing some burpees, jumping jacks, push-ups, dancing in the mirror, whatever it is, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. keep you active. Exactly. Everyone has twenty minutes in a day. I know, I know. Everyone has no excuses. So right. that's that would be the one that okay. grabs me a little bit. I want to bang my head against a brick wall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that one I love. Even though sometimes I, you know, like, I've used that one myself. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. I know. A lot of. But them. then it, it does all come down to priority, right? I, you know, uh, if, absolutely. If, we, if we're honest with people, habits. if we're honest with ourselves, we just say, I, I could do it, but I would rather just not. I'd rather just sit here and uh, watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was just telling one of my students last night. I was Be like, honest with yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's all about discipline, developing habits, and whatnot. What is it? I saw that you were okay. Like, what are your pictures? You were like all swole and lean. <laughs> I think. Have you done ultra marathons before? I have as well. Oh yeah, yeah. damn! <laughs> Give me a high five. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, because I saw one picture. And I just remember you were raising your hands, and I think you had like one of those water packs. That's and right. Yeah. I, then I said, "Oh man, he probably did an ultra that time." Yeah. Because not me- describe that experience because oh, I really. Incredible. Oh man. That was incredible. Have you, yeah, that was incredible. And I, I definitely, rec- I definitely encourage you to look at look into something like that because I know you you're ultra into, beast. You like was, your running, right? You're like, yeah. you're, 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 I know you're doing spots and training and, and yeah, yeah. So I've done tough mutters and tough stuff. Tough mutters, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And if you like that kind of stuff, you, I think you'd really love the ultra marathon. I did, but that's just running, right? Yeah, it's just it's, it's running, running slash walking slash shuffling. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> after a while, you just get you just how, shuffle. How many miles? How many so kilos? So we did. As in, I'll do it in. in I'll do it in the metrics. It's two hundred fifty k. Right. In five days, it was, a, it was a marathon a day, twenty six miles a day, for 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 five days. Yeah, 
and but it was broken down into different stages. So you know, like the Tour de France, where they have certain right. different different stages mean different uh, terrains uh-huh. and different distances. Right. So I did mine in Chile, actually. In the oh, get out of here! Yeah, in Chile. Boy, the world is small. That yeah. is really funny. In Chile, yeah. you flew how long? It took like two days to get down there, right? Yeah, it took. Uh, I flew from. I, flew, I was living in Sydney at the time, so I flew from Sydney oh. to, to Santiago, and then flew up to Atacama Desert and ran through the Atacama Desert. Oh my goodness! Yeah. That was crazy, absolutely crazy, unreal. The the <gasps> the the landscape, the community that that we were running with. Uh, it, was, it was a very small group, only about 120 people right. in the whole in the whole race, and uh-huh. different stage races, very well organised. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, it was humbling. Right. Put it that way, humbling. You're just sharing a tent with six other people. No one showered. Right. No one showered. No one showered for like six to seven days. God Closed damn. quarters. Right. Uh, yeah, dry, dry, 35 degrees during the day, uh, minus three at night. Get out of here! Yeah, it's cold. It's really cold at night. It's a super extreme, super extreme uh, run. Oh my god. Have you heard of David Goggins? Ex Navy SEAL guy, that sounds familiar. He sounds he ran apparently 100 miles straight. Oh wow! And he said his kidneys shut it down, pooped on himself, urinating blood, mm. so many different things. And of course, he's been through so much during his childhood and whatnot. Mm. That's terrifying. Mm. I just oh my it, yeah. When you push your body to those extremes, yeah, right. Shit happens. <laughs> Shit happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it, 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 I, I like to test. I think, I think like a Nagogi is another one. I think a lot of people like, like uh, yes, yeah. You um, heard of the Spartan Nagogi, right? Yeah, yeah. Pure bananas. No yeah. no sleeper for 60 days. Great Wall <laughs> in China. Iceland, mm. you know, climbing icebergs. Mm. Mm. Full on extreme. <laughs> and you, I think you do, you, do the, nuts, you do these things at a certain time of life when you are facing facing challenges. Absolutely. In, in Absolutely. all different aspects of your life, whether it's career, relationship, whatever. Yeah. And you do these things to, um, well, for me anyway, it was to do it through... Prove to yourself that you can achieve anything, and you can you can do challenges. You can right. get through challenges, so physical as well as others. Right. Okay. And wow, man. Yeah. It, well, the thing you know, Spartan Sprint Super coming up. Yeah. I think you have signed up. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. We're doing uh, it together. Hopefully, the yeah. Race is on. Hopefully, I'm still here, everyone. <laughs> I know. Don't cry, ladies out there. Uh, still hoping to stay here in Thailand uh, because now this is what we're going to be talking about next. But. Um, yeah, different visas are coming out. I might be able to start my own business. I think it's that time. You know what I mean? It's time. It's exciting. And yeah, I was just talking to you about that, of course, off mic. Uh, and it's exciting. So trainers, entrepreneurship, doing everything, <laughs> buying all this. When is the right time mm. to, to become a trainer, to become a business owner or entrepreneur or would you just get sick and tired of hearing a boss and say, "Oh, well, your your student complained about you"? You know, mm. it's a little bit of a British accent because, of mm. course, but uh, <laughs> it's a little I'm bit worn off. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when what do you think is the right time? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a. Uh, I think it comes down to like a. We all have. Um, I think we all have this. Anyone that's made the jump into into um, going from something like corporate uh-huh. or going from uh, going from an employee to to running your own business, uh-huh. or after after a while you'll have this desire, uh-huh. uh, deep down desire. I think I don't think there's anything that's too tangible. Uh-huh. I think it's more of a feeling, like a, it's more of an emotion of like this passion, this desire that or creative 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 idea that's just been stumped uh-huh. by. Going to the same place, doing the routine, and, and everything's fine. You know, everything's good. You got your paycheck at the end of the month. Uh-huh. You're in this nice safety zone. I've uh-huh. got my visas, got my work permits, all this kind of cool stuff. That's that's just nice and comfortable. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny how we talk about visas and work permits so much because yeah. it's so dang, it's so goddamn hard to get one of those. It but is. Yeah. It, it, it makes things comfortable, and then making the jump is like, oh, God, it's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be a lot of hours. It's going to be a lot of networking. It's going to be a lot of pushing, but... As soon as you you'll have that, it will just. I think it will just literally just just be a a moment. You'll have this moment where you'll be like, okay, now is the time. I'm done mm-hmm. and I'm moving on. And it's I've got this great idea. Right. And, and my only suggestion is to have a plan. Uh-huh. Have a have a have a plan. Have an idea. Right. Stick to that one idea. Be specific as you can about what that idea is, uh-huh. and create what your goal is, and cr- make it smart. Uh-huh. We all know what smart goals are: specific, measurable, attainable. 
relative and time based. Right. Stick a smart goal to your to your act to your overall goal and create a great strategy uh -huh. by which you're gonna make that step. Right. So basically going into war uh -huh. with going going take going into battle with the right armory, going into battle with the right people behind you, with the right knowledge, with the right resources, the right strategy. Right. And you'll make the uh, you'll be able to make the jump. Okay. Wow, there you go. For all of you enthusiasts out there who are looking to make that jump, there it is. Les Brown, he once said, the process is more important than the dream. Wonderful. What do you think about that? Process is, I think Build it's this great. Gym. I love it. The <laughs> process is more, I mean, even though sometimes we hate the process. I know, we hate it. We hate it. We just want things to happen. We you do, know? we do. But what, imagine what happens, what happens when it happened and all this stuff know. has gone, right? It's just like when you win a Super Bowl, like, right. you know, the American football. Tom Brady, he's won, he's won, he's won. After a while, you're just like, well, I kind of want to lose now, you know? I mean, Michael Jordan, and he never got sick and tired of losing. You know, he just kept winning, and sometimes a lot of it's, – it's like this. If someone came to me and said, here you go, AJ, Arsenio, whatever, first name, nickname, here's $1 million. Is that – is that – I mean, a lot of people out there be like, yeah, I'll take it and just buy a bunch of materialistic things. But think about it. What about that entire process from zero to one million? Mm -hmm. That's the best part because what you create during that process is more important than that dream. Yeah. You know? So what's your greatest failure? Now, the failure you had, of course, you know, in Ibiza or whatever you want to call yeah. it, in Spain. Yeah. Give me your greatest failure. Fitness failure, or get you know, just give me a failure. Just give me your greatest failure. Oh, okay, I, I, you know what? It's really interesting. You you mentioned that. So I did I did a talk uh, last year oh. on how failures fuel success. Yes. Um, and it was I, it was a really interesting process to go through because I have actually I failed quite a lot in in, but I've also I've also achieved quite a lot. So I don't think I think it goes, you can't have one without the other. I think mm. that's, we can, a lot of us can agree on that, and I think. I, I like to tell the story about um, this particular time where I was. <laughs> it's gonna so get saucy up in here. That's so embarrassing. It was. Uh, it's okay. So it was. Um, I know you. I know you're really into, You want to do your speaking. You want to get into a TEDx. A TEDx, absolutely. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. And I definitely come and watch you. Watch you speak. Uh, you. The, it was. It was. It was a. It was a. It was a talk mm -hmm. that I was supposed to do at one of these big. It was a big Asia fitness convention. Right? Oh so damn! Now, like, I know. Singapore. It was in Thailand. Actually, it was Is in Bangkok right? in 2012. Okay. And if you can think, if you imagine this, there's a big room full of all my uh, stuff. Oh boy. Oh yeah. no. Come on, Rich. No. <laughs> you don't know what's happening. Oh. All my stuff, how, okay. All my staff, all my peers, all my mentors, <sighs> all the important people in the fitness industry, all standing there. And it was, um, it was a competition to become a fitness idol. 12. <laughs> and I was like, I am going to take this. I deserve it. And in my head, I'd already, I'd already, I'd already, I'd already Ooh, won. Man. I'd already achieved it. I'd already done it. I think maybe it was arrogance. I don't know what it was. But I remember getting onto the stage, uh -huh. and I just, they said, okay, welcome onto the stage, Mr. Richard Cohen. Hey, everyone clap. Yeah. And I went on the stage, I forgot. No! Everything. But see, you memorized verbatim. Is that what you did? I don't know what I what? did. Oh my honest. god! You, you just went blank. I was completely blank. And then I was sitting so in my. You know, you know. It's oh. this famous saying: If you're in your head, you're dead. Right? Uh, you're yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I like in that. my head, not out there, trying to deliver. I was focused on like, oh my god, am I going to get this right? Am I going to get these words right? Right. And uh, yeah, just completely messed up everything. And just so what happened? What? Just a, well, what happened? Um, <laughs> dry mouth, <laughs> a lot of sweating, <laughs> jelly legs. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was horrific. Yeah. It was horrific. Plus that, um, were you stuttering? Were you stuttering? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't I could even get any words out, let alone stutter. Stuttering would have been a uh, progression. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah. Oh, that's was, horrible, man. It was horrible. It was horrible. That but happens. I learned a lot from that um, failure. And actually, interesting enough, um, I went back the following year. Mm -hmm. Very similar thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Uh, Where? Exactly the same thing. I mean, it, was, it was two years later, but it was slightly different. And, and this story involved a bit of dancing as well. So, 
Let's just not go there. Wait, wait, no, 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 it turned into a bit of a disaster, let's put it that way. <laughs> and, but again, I was determined. I was determined that, hey, like, you know, I, I, even though I've failed miserably, <laughs> right, I have got to be able to deliver a talk or deliver something in front of people right. um, that can, um, and, and prove to myself that I can do it. Because right. if, if I'm in front of a group of people teaching a class, no problem. If I'm one on one with somebody, I can I can talk no problem. But I had to prove to myself that I could do this. So eventually, I created this talk. And last year, I presented this talk on what uh, how failure is fuel success. And I talked about that exact incident and how having right. that failure, having that incident, actually <gasps> created this desire to want to be able to do, do it. it. Uh, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able to, to achieve you it. Keep and doing it, right? Yeah, to keep doing it. To keep doing it. Doing it. Doing it. And actually, very interesting. You you, you um, mentioned Tom Brady earlier because the story with Tom Brady and oh, how man. he was this lanky, unfit, yep, non-athletic dude that um, was very, very last picked in the draft. Yep, absolutely. Now became this uh, four-time cheater. I mean, su- Super Bowl. But I'm, I'm so. Oh, that came out wrong. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't know. That just came up. Okay. Yeah. Was it a uh, was it a pigskin ball? Was it? <laughs> What was in that thing? Who knows? <laughs> just, just recording over there on the sideline. Like, nothing's going on. We're just looking at all the plays you guys ran. It's okay. No, but that is amazing, though. I mean, yeah. um, Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. I think he didn't make his varsity basketball team in uh, high right. school, I think. Right. Yeah, or junior yeah. varsity, something like yeah. that, yeah. you know? And even Edison, you know, a thousand times in the life of an adventure. It takes that long. So. Right. Yeah, that was that was potentially one of my. Um, big, there's, there's been others, but I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's just, you said one though, didn't you? Right, just one. <laughs> just one. Just yeah. one. Yeah. No, that's funny though. But they're, they're important. That's good. I think they're important. It's Extremely. important to take the lessons, uh, feedback from them. Oh, okay. That's something that you're talking about, right? And you're on your on your you want to talk about on your TEDx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you guys, of course, a lot of you probably from the lab are going to listen to this, uh, and especially everyone from around the world and whatnot. Greatest failure, 2005 Sunrise Regional Championship race. Uh, one well, 300 meter intermediate hurdles, and Palo Verde High School, Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, and. I was actually I don't I was supposed to at least make the sunrise finals. And uh, going to the state championship race is extremely difficult, right? I, that means I'd have to drop below like a 39 second 300 meter. That's insane going over sticks. But man, I just remember I was standing over there at the starting line. I was like, "Okay, here we go." And I remember looking at two Filipinos. I still remember, you know, I don't know why. I don't know who they were, but I remember they gave me a nod like, "Go get this." Never seen him before in my life. Last time seeing him. And I remember I got into the blocks and the gun went off and I was flying. I was clearly in first. And just right around that back, after 100 meters, I just felt my legs turn into cinder blocks. I could not throw my legs over the sticks. And I saw everyone just run right by me. And I remember I went down uh, to the finish line. 50 seconds. Horrific time. Fell. Wet. Cried like a baby coach you know he had tears in his eyes and stuff like and I said I just told him I said I'm sorry coach but from this day even when I worked out today this morning or went running from that BTS station way on the other side of town to Saladang today which is basically like four miles that last 200 meters I pushed that was the greatest most wonderful failure I've ever encountered because it still pushes me today when I still work out in the gym. Yeah, I still remember that. That very moment, those feelings, the hardships, everything. You I know? know? I know. I know. So, awesome. yeah. Thanks for sharing us that story. Of course, the speech. You know, the speaking <laughs> one, man. That, that's the best. That is the best. But, yeah. Okay, so, we're going to tune this one down. What is the, what impact do you want to have in the world? What What is your ultimate goal? What is the purpose of this what's your plan for the next 10 to 20 or when it's all said and done and when someone's mm. reading that eulogy mm. and you know what is it that you want them to say yeah 
I think it's a. I, I, I'm here to. I'm here to contribute. I'm here to Absolutely. participate. I'm here to learn. I'm here to develop, and I'm here to um, explore as well. I mean, I want to be. Able, I want to travel. I love traveling. I want to travel to as many countries and see as many cool things as I as I as I possibly can. Right. I want to help. I number one thing I like helping people. Absolutely. Like just like yourself. Yeah, just I like love me. helping people. I love helping people. Um, Realize that they they can change their lives and they can do it, they can do it with physical activity they can do it by uh, making a mental shift and in, in, in their minds mm-hmm. they can do it just by, by taking the next step in their careers they can they can make the switch and I'm just I'm just here to encourage them to ha- uh, to find to find a great intention and to and to move intentionally behind it right. um, so uh, uh, the gravestone I'm not entirely sure um, <laughs> is the gravestone to, <laughs> hoping to live for the eulogy <laughs> hoping to live forever so. Um, Hopefully by that time, right? For the next 50 years. By then, I'll be in cryo. Oh, my God. But yeah, to you, uh, too funny. I think, you know, I want to, I want to be able to, I want, you know, I love, I love, I love, I love family. I want, you know, I want a big family. I want to have kids. I want a big family. I want to have big, you know, nice, nice house with, it doesn't have to be a big house, but just land and, Uh you know, nice, Surroundings and just nature, and uh, to have have family, community all around, and I know that what I did in Thailand or wherever it is I did in the world has made has made a difference. Even if it's to um, to even if it's to if, it, if it's a big difference to a small amount of people, then those people have then contributed to others, and that's great. And I feel like I'm I'm doing that quite well. I'm doing that with the fitness industry, and I feel like not just I'm doing it. Uh, it's it's my whole team are doing it. Uh, my whole team are, are, are creating this inspiring uh, movement mm-hmm. to with, with fitness with health and fitness and right get people to prioritize their, their health first okay all right yeah. awesome um, I completely forgot the book the book god dang it okay so why the book and what is it that we're going to do right now with the book uh, yes 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 of course uh, <laughs> the book, the book yeah. I was like okay so, yeah you know uh, what I'm saying yeah <laughs> You're listening. He was just—he would give you a lot of um, a lot of hand <laughs> hand gestures right then. So we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing a giveaway uh, okay, for awesome. a, for a free book. Uh, okay. Free. It's it's uh, my new book called Fit Pro to Profit, uh, an essential success success guide for fitness studio uh, entrepreneurs, personal trainers, and in fact any, any entrepreneur that's wanting to make a jump into uh, starting their own business, like we spoke about. Yep. Uh, I am giving a, giving a free giveaway to, um, to to the listeners on the Arsenio Buck show. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> how are we going to give away the book? Uh, I think shipping is going to be paid by I don't know who. No, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was hoping it's a big so, book. Yeah. <laughs> All twelve pages. <laughs> <laughs> The next one will be thicker. I'm sure the next one will be thicker. Uh, you messaged me about that. Too. Yeah. That's so funny. So I'll tell you a little story about the book. I'll just quick share a quick, quick oh, story about yeah. the book. So sure. I've, been write, I've, been write, I've been writing, I've been writing, similar to probably, probably yourself. I've been, I've been writing content yeah. for about five, six years, just on, on a lot of different things. industry, or yeah, on, on like how I managed to get clients, on how how I feel like people have, how I've been able to help people, mm-hmm. how I've been able to um, help personal trainers. Um, Separate themselves um, from the crowd. Separate uh-huh. themselves from uh, to, to become a become a become an authority in the industry. Right. And I've written all, all my little notes and suggestions for years, years, years. And I just I just I was on the airplane one 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 day, flying back from Sydney to Bangkok, and I was looking at all these words. I was like, I've got to do something with this because this is oh, so much yeah, stuff right. here. But it's all in uh-huh. a different order. So. I spent about um, I spent the last two years just just putting it all into order. I got it copyright written a few times. I got it restructured a few times, mm. and then it was my goal. I said, okay, well, last year my goal was to finish the book, mm. and I finished it in October last year, and then just got the printed copies now. So, yeah. um, and how did you do that? Where where did you go with like um, how did you get the copies printed? Uh, uh, I got the copies printed here in Thailand. I should right. give you the details for the okay. for to get them printed. Uh, yeah, okay. I got them printed here in Thailand, but I got the original book was uh, was created by one of my coaches. I had a, had a had a life coach myself, a business coach right. in Australia, and he helped me to develop the book. Nice, and, yeah, and write the book and develop the book. So okay, it made it made a big help because for me it was just a load of jumbled notes. And yeah, yeah. He helps to kind of like so someone else's eye, someone else's perception to come in and restructure everything, redesign everything. 
made, made a huge difference. Okay. Uh, so um, that's cool. Yeah, and then I rewrote, and then I had to rewrite <coughs> the whole. Rewrite um, the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing. I just want to rewrite the uh, the beginning, the pre- preface, and, and and the summary. And uh, my girlfriend actually helped me a lot with that. Is that right? Give her a little shout out. There we go. Shout out to Kaylee. Kaylee. Yeah. Kaylee. I saw that. She is from where? She's Australian. Australian. Yeah, we met before, right? I'm sure. One of the, one oh. of the studios. Yeah. Oh, is that one, right? of the, one of the sessions. Yeah, I think we met before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or the Winter Wonder Lab. Charity, yeah, charity that's what I was thinking. That was the first thing that came up. Yeah, we yeah. were actually out there in the middle of a park just doing all. I got lost. I actually ran like an extra five kilometers all the way around the lake, and everyone's like, Where'd you go? I was like, I thought we were over there. I was so angry. <laughs> we ran, like, yeah, me and this other guy. Swim. We thought you jumped into the lake. Yeah, I was like, There was alligators. And, and, and she, oh, yeah, it was pretty bad. But okay, she had to be there. Yeah, all right. There, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So that's good because I'm actually writing a book. For those of you who are probably thinking about writing a book out there, like Tim Ferriss says, you only got one shot. If you deliver a bad book, that's the end. You can't take it back and stuff like that. Who cares? But as long as you get your story out there, you got to tell the stories. A lot of people, they've ruined their Hollywood careers trying to get a story out there, such as uh, The Birth of a Nation, Nate Parker, remarkable movie. Um, and a lot of other people who make movies about civil rights and stuff like that. But that book... That's what ultimately I'm going to do. And I'm, my book's going to be titled, you know, titled, quote unquote, Black Teacher in Thailand. So from the very beginning, when I started going through the transgressions to October 2014, but not just a pity party, but how did I overcome the world, the society, the personal development? That's what the lessons are. That's what the lessons, yeah. yeah so great. that's what I want to do. I want to implement that. So that's, that's what I really liked about your book. I was reading, I was like, dude, this is really good. And you put actionable steps into the book too you're like make your five biggest strains and stuff like that so yeah. that's awesome yeah thanks man thanks I, I wanted to do it um, not so I didn't want to create a how to guide right. there were so many as there seems like there's so many how to guides out there yeah, yeah I wanted to kind of like relate it more to some of the stories that I've, I've been through which you know and not everyone's gonna go through a similar it's exactly the same story but very similar right. I think very similar stories they can relate to so I wanted right. to create it more like that right I'm glad you enjoyed it enjoyed the read yeah, absolutely. All right, and now in terms of the book, people, I was hoping somebody would. Met, well, the thing is, I didn't. We didn't share anything and all that stuff, and of course, all that. So the thing is, if anyone sends or Richard, now first, Rich, how can people get in contact with you? So they can contact me. I'm on Facebook. Okay. Um, you can you can hit me up on Facebook. It's um, Facebook.com. It's Richie Dollars. Richie, uh, Richie Dollars. Yeah, Richie Dollars. That's my. Uh, it's all right. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was my, a friend of mine. It was. It was. A, it was like there was a UK in in UK. There was this movement called Garage Music. Did you hear about Garage? Oh, I heard music? about that. Yeah, yeah I saw UK, that in a book. Garage Music. Yeah. Uh-huh. So there's a UK Garage Music. There's a DJ called Richie Dollars, and then a friend of mine started calling me Richie Dollars, and then. Before that, and that's what I thought. That's pretty cool. I'll take that. Uh, so, that's my email address. But yeah, I'm on Facebook. Um, Richie Dollars. I've got a uh, on Instagram. RC Movement. Mm-hmm. RC Movement is my website as well. So www.rcmovement.com is my right? personal personal website. You can contact me there. Um, and uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'll share the link on, on link on face on my Facebook page. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so whenever you get the first. Well, I don't know if it's is it for my listeners or probably for both of ours, we could right? Be both. Okay, yeah, so be both. one on yeah. your side, yeah. whoever Let's give two books away. Two books. Yeah, and there you go. Two wow. books for all of you out there. So, and the thing is, we're going crazy here. I, <laughs> I'll be doing the That's worldwide wild. shipping. Okay. Uh, on my end cuz I don't know where. Hopefully no one from Bhutan, you know, it's going to cost like $5,000 to send stuff there. Or we could just send them the PDF. Yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, we'll send you an ebook or something like that. Yeah. How to cook steak, I don't know. Um, but <clears throat> whoever messages me on, of course, the Arsenio Buck Show Facebook page, Arsenio Buck Show Twitter, uh, the Arsenio Buck Show Instagram, everything Arsenio Buck Show, whoever messages me first gets the book. So don't be shy. And on YouTube also. So for those of you who might listen to this on YouTube, if whoever comments first, and I got some good comments just now, Whoever comments first, I'll send you the book, Sounds and then good. that's how we'll do it. And then, of course, on Rich, uh, Rich's side, Richard, Richards, Rich, you can be Rich. Rich, yeah, Rich, I'm gonna call Rich. Yeah, okay, yeah. on Rich's side, Rich's if I can say that, yeah. uh, we'll do the same thing. So, Richard, man, oh, Rich, goddamn it, Rich, it's been a 
plum pleasing pleasure, as Les Brown said. I took that. I took that from him. I was gonna just fumble that. But man, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I actually got into uh, got in touch with you last September after the Spartan race. Uh, you probably heard from me prior months within a year saying, "Hey, how's the lab? This and that." And then I came back and said, "Do you have a class Monday morning?" Okay, I'm there. And then, and yeah. then I ended up showing up, and right. that changed my life forever because, man, just being able to stand in the mirror and look at myself naked is just amazing. Yeah. It's, just, <laughs> it's just spectacular, you know? So I don't want to give you guys too many details, but I'm just so grateful. Thank you for coming on here, and uh, uh, thanks for joining the party, guys. Richie, you got anything else to say, brother? You're welcome. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, thanks for having us on the show. It's been great to, uh, great to be on here. And um, yeah, thank you very much for everything, everyone, for listening. Um, hope you guys managed to stay all the way to the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> one hour, one yeah, hour, one hour. Boom. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just always um, just encouraging you to move intentionally. That's my that's my that's my word. Awesome. And for, the, and for you guys tuning in for the first time, if you guys like my my lunacy, uh, of course you guys can follow me, share it, whatever, like it. But thanks for tuning in. Self-development podcast in terms of creating habits, confidence, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for everyone tuning in. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.